right, so today we're going to cover improper integrals. So is this where you grade us down if we do the integration properly or whatnot? Mm -hmm. So this is the kind of integration where you take points off of us? Uh, it depends on the problem, really. There are certain aspects where points would be taken off. But I'll point them out so you don't make that mistake. Okay, so if you remember, the definition of a definite integral is the integral from a to b of f of x with respect to x. Okay. Where we know a and b are some finite number. You just say a finite interval. All right. Now, in this case, for improper integrals, instead of a and b, you could have negative infinity or positive infinity. So now you're going to try and figure out the integral from 3 to infinity or from negative infinity, 0 to negative infinity, or negative infinity to 0. So we're just going to figure out that way. And really just kind of using limits to do it so it's not a whole lot different than what you've been doing so far with limits. Just a little bit of a tweak. Okay, so definition of improper integrals. with infinite integration units. Oop, limits. Okay, so let's say for the first one, if a function is continuous, on the interval from a to infinity. Okay, so then we'd have the integral from a to infinity of f of x with respect to x. which really doesn't work because you can't have the integral of an infinite number. So what we do is, instead of having it to infinity, we just rewrite it. So everything is the same except the infinity. But what we do is we make that, I'll say C. some value C, or you can use B, or you can use whatever variable you want. But we have the limit as C approaches infinity. Okay, so all we did is just tweak it a little bit. Okay. So what if we have a function that's continuous? from negative infinity to some value b. Then we have the integral from negative infinity to b of f of x. Okay. Then we really do the same thing. We rewrite it. 
as the limit, and you can put any variable you want there. It says A approaches negative infinity. And we can make that from A to B of F of X. Then you integrate the same way you would normally. Okay. Now for the third one, let's say if your function is continuous on the interval from negative infinity to infinity. Then we'd have pretty much the same thing, but from negative infinity to infinity of f of x dx. So when you have from negative infinity to infinity, you just rewrite it using the first two. So you make that equal to the integral from negative infinity, and you can pick any number you want, I usually pick zero just because it makes integrating a lot easier. But we'll just call it C for now. Of f of x dx plus the integral from C to infinity of f of x dx. Which is just our first and second way of rewriting it. So then we just end up with the limit, oh, move that up just a hair, and let's say as A approaches negative infinity, the integral from A to C of f of x plus we have the limit, and I'll put B there, as B approaches infinity. C to B of f of x dx. Right. Any questions on that one? Okay, so quick side note. For numbers one and two, if a limit exists, they say that it converges. That means if it's any constant at all, if it's zero, pi, any number at all. If it exists, it's converging. Now, if, it, if you do all of that and you end up with infinity and it doesn't exist, then it's divergent. It's positive or negative infinity. function diverges. <clears throat> now for the third one, if you have, let's say, you integrate the first one and you get 400. You integrate the second one and you get infinity. If either one of those are infinity or positive or negative infinity, the whole thing diverges. So both of them won't have to be infinity or negative infinity. Right. Yes? So then when you break down for the, um, for the A to negative infinity and the positive infinity, mm -hmm. could you have one diverge and one converge? Or oh, yeah. If one converges or one diverges. Oh, for these two? Yeah. Well, independent of each other, but that entire side, so if this converges to 84, oh. if you have 84 plus infinity, it's still going to be infinity. Okay. So. Uh, for the case of the limits itself, mm -hmm. where it's like approaching infinity, mm -hmm. uh, are these con 
considered in any sense, like, would it matter if they are left or right-sided approaches to the committee, or...? In some cases. And actually, I have an example where it would matter. So only if it's, if it's not, as I say it, if it doesn't exist at a certain point. So let's say if you're going from zero to it's pi, and it doesn't exist at zero, then you can just find the limit as you're approaching zero from the right or from the left. Okay. So this way you're not going right at that point. All right. Any other questions on this one? All right. So let's do a couple examples. Okay, so let's say if we wanted to evaluate the integral from 1 to infinity of dx over x. Oop, that infinity doesn't look all that great. All right, so first thing you want to do is Get rid of that infinity. So we rewrite it. Okay. So we have the limit from 1. You can use A or B or whichever one you want. I'll say from 1 to B as B approaches infinity of dx over x. Then once we have that, we just get the natural log. I mean, not natural log. We just integrate there, and we get the natural log. So we have the limit as b approaches infinity of natural log of x. Well, it should be absolute value, but and that's from one to b. Okay. So now we just use the fundamental theorem. So that would be the limit as b approaches infinity of natural log of 1, oh, natural log of b minus natural log of 1. Okay, so we know natural log of 1 is 0, so that just disappears. So we have the limit b approaches infinity of natural log of b. Okay. So we know as b get, I mean, as b gets bigger and bigger and bigger and bigger, the natural log of b gets bigger and bigger and bigger and bigger. So because it just keeps growing, as your b keeps growing, it actually equals infinity. I swear for some reason I cannot draw infinity without messing it up. There we go. Okay. So whenever it's infinite, you know it diverges. From 1 to infinity of dx over x diverges. Should we specify to which it diverges to, like negative or positive infinity? Uh, only if that's, well, like, if it's multiple choice and that's one of the options, then. But most of the time, if it diverges, they just say it diverges. All right, so any questions on that one? All right. Okay, so let's do another one. Let's say if we wanted to evaluate say for problem A, the integral from 0 to infinity of e to the negative x Back to x. And let's say for problem B, the integral from 0 to infinity of 1 over x squared plus 1 with respect to x. Okay. So for both of them, first thing you want to do, get rid of that infinity. So 
we make the limit so we can go from 0 to B or A or C or whichever one you want to use as B approaches infinity of e to the negative x with respect to x. Okay. Then we go ahead and just integrate that. So that's equal to the limit as B approaches infinity of negative e to the negative x from 0 to b. Okay, and I'll just rewrite it over here. So that's the limit as b approaches infinity of negative e to the negative b minus negative e to the 0. which is equal to the limit of, say, negative e to the negative b. If you wanted to, you could rewrite that as negative 1 over e to the power of b as b approaches infinity plus 1. So we know as b gets bigger and bigger and bigger, e to the power of b gets bigger and bigger and bigger. So if you have 1 over a number that's getting bigger and bigger and bigger and bigger and bigger, the limit of that would be 0. So we know the limit of negative 1 over e to the b as b approaches infinity is 0. And the limit of 1 is just 1. So we end up with 0 plus 1, which is 1. Okay. So this one converges to 1. Right. Any questions on that one? Right. And for B, you really do the same thing. Just clean that up a little bit. Okay. So first thing you want to do is rewrite it. Okay, we have the limit. And we can go from 0 to A, 0 to B. I normally just out of habit put A and B here just that's just me if you want to switch it up you're more than free okay so as b approaches infinity of 1 over x squared plus 1 oh, dx okay so if we go ahead and integrate what's in there that gives us the limit as b approaches infinity of arctangent of x from 0 to b. All right, and using our fundamental theorem, b approaches infinity. We're going to have the arctangent of b minus the arctangent of 0. So we know as tangent gets bigger and bigger and bigger because the arc tangent has a graph that looks like that. That's your pi over 2, and that's your negative pi over 2. So as it's getting bigger and bigger and bigger, it's just getting closer and closer and closer and closer to pi over 2. And arctangent of 0, remember tangent is just sine over cosine. So if it's sine of 0 over cosine of 0, that's just going to be 0. So your answer is pi over 2. 
So this one is converged. Any questions on that one? Yes. Is there uh, another way to find that answer without using the graph? Oh, no, the graph was just to visualize it. No, you don't have to use it. All right, any other questions on this one? All right. Oops, anyone still writing? Okay, so let's say for the next example, if you wanted to evaluate the integral from 1 to infinity of 1 minus x times e to the negative x with respect to x. So once again, first thing we do is rewrite it. So we have the limit from 1 to b as b approaches infinity of 1 minus x times e to the negative x. All right, and we just integrate what's in there. So if we use integration by parts, we let u equal, I don't need the parentheses, equal 1 minus x, means your du is equal to 1 dx. Your dv is e to the negative x dx. Oh, negative, I'm thinking minus 1. Thank you. And your v is equal to negative e to the negative x dx. Move that over just a hair. There we go. Nope, not for v. Oh, why did I write it in v? Gotcha. I don't know if they're agreeing with you. Wasn't a question. No, there's not one there. All right, so we know for integral of u dv equals uv minus integral of v du. So this is going to equal our uv, which is 1 minus x times negative e to the negative x uh -oh, minus the integral of our v, negative e to the negative x du, which is negative dx. Right, so, hmm? well, I'm just kind of integrating it first, and I'm going to add that at the end, because that will get really tiring writing that over and over and over. All right, so we have, go ahead and distribute that. Negative e to the negative x minus x e to the negative x. Negative and negative is positive, so it's minus the integral of e to the negative x dx which would make that positive. yep positive e to the negative x so oh positive thank you so you have e to the neg negative e to the negative x plus x e to the negative x plus e to the negative x well, you can do the plus C, but it's definite, so you don't really need the plus C. All right, so these two cancel out. So you're left, uh -oh, left with x e to the negative x. Nope. 
All right, so that means that our integral from one to b as b approaches infinity of one minus x e to the negative x with respect to x is equal to the limit of x e to the negative x from one to b as b approaches infinity. So that's going to equal the limit b approaches infinity of b e to the negative b minus 1 times e to the negative 1. If you wanted, you could rewrite this one as b over e to the b. Sometimes it helps to visualize it. minus the limit of 1 over e, which is just a constant. So it just becomes 1 over e. Right. So if you notice here, if you plug in infinity for b, you end up with infinity over infinity, which means you can use L'Hopital's rule. Why didn't you warn us that we need a new piece of paper for this example? <laughs> All right, so if we get the derivative of b, that would be 1. So the limit as b approaches infinity. And derivative of e to the b is just e to the b minus 1 over e. Now we know that you have a constant up top. And as b gets bigger and bigger and bigger and bigger and bigger, 1 over b gets closer and closer and closer and closer to 0. So the limit here is actually equal to 0. So you end up with 0 minus 1 over e, which is just negative 1 over e. Okay. So it converges to negative 1 over e. Which one? This one, this one? Yeah, right there. Did you mean to put that limit there? Or? Oh, yeah, I just put it there just, just, just as a place. Oh, yeah. I understand. Yeah, okay. that's all. But it's still a constant. Yeah. Right, that's okay, that's right. I'll try to avoid skipping steps just for that reason. All right, any questions on this one? Where the interval converges, what was the rest part, so rest of it? I heard you say it was supposed to be the sum, and then your voice got lower, so I couldn't oh. hear you. <laughs> okay. So, when you integrate definite intervals, right? Mm -hmm. And you get a constant because we have the end point and the starting point, right? Yeah. When you get proper intervals, mm -hmm. when they converge at a point, yeah. is that akin to what we expect at the end of our uh, proper definite? Yeah, pretty much. Okay. So, yeah, that's it. 